Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. I have three DIYs for you guys today. I'm using three little milk jars from the Dollar Tree and then I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory to paint these and I'm using a regular paintbrush because it just holds so much more paint and I think it gives better coverage than the foam brushes and I'm really wanting this completely covered so that when I go in to distress it, um, it just looks really awesome. <laughs> you guys will see what I'm saying. So I went ahead and painted all three jars and then um, I just did one coat since the I used the paintbrush. I felt like I had pretty good coverage. Um, near the top part that didn't have all the little bumps, it wasn't as good of coverage, but I wasn't too worried about it since I'm going to be using some twine around the top and then the flowers. Um, you really didn't notice at all. So this is how it looked with the one coat. And then I'm going in with a wet paper towel. I've never done this before, um, but I absolutely love the result. So instead of using sandpaper, I'm using a wet paper towel. And um, with wet distressing, um, you have to be really careful. I was so nervous at first. Um, I didn't want to take too much off, but then I realized I could push a little bit harder. But then I did get some big pieces that came off. So if you're not wanting it too, too distressed, just be super careful and just go light at first and you'll kind of get a feel for what you can do. But I really liked how it looked. Um, it made it almost more like chippy. It just looked more realistic to me. As you can see, I had a big piece come off right there, but I didn't care because I wanted it to be really distressed looking and old. And I just really love how it made it look more realistic as you can see it was really really chippy instead of like seeing sandpaper marks on it so i just loved it so next i'm just taking some twine and wrapping it around the top of the bottles i'm starting out with a longer piece and you'll see i'm not gonna do very well explaining this i don't think but you'll see how i do it here in the in the video um, but I'm just leaving that one piece out the side where I want it to come up on the side and then I'm wrapping some twine around and then I cut the excess off with my scissors but I still left another long piece so that I can hang it so basically I'm cutting this and then I'm taking that last or the end piece and tucking it underneath one of the strings that I already have wrapped around you can see what I'm doing here and then I pulled it through and then that way I had two pieces out the top or out the sides and then I could tie them at the top if that makes sense I hope you can see what I did there I had been looking for these jars for quite a while when I'm seeing them in everyone else's um, videos and I just couldn't find them so I was like so so excited when I did find them so I have this box that I made with chicken wire in a previous video and I'll link that down below if you want to see how I made it. But I just decided to drill some holes in the top and then I am poking that twine through the top and then I just tie a knot to hang the vase. This box is kind of small but I thought it was perfect for the size of these milk jars um, but I did want to make sure it was hanging and not just sitting on the bottom. So I looked to see where it was and then I tried to tie the knot as close to where I wanted it as possible. And then after that, I did add some flowers. Mm, I was not able to find any of the lavender at Dollar Tree um, this spring. I don't know if they had it and I missed it or if mine never got it, but I wasn't able to find those really cute pics that everyone else has. So I did go to Hobby Lobby and get some little purple flowers it's not lavender it's something else but super cute looks kind of like wildflowers to me and i just put some of those in there and i think it turned out so adorable i'm in love with this so this next one is a sign that i made for my boyfriend so first i just have some wood that i got from the 75 percent off pile at home depot and i'm using some paint stir sticks to um, attach those pieces and I just cut those down to the size that I wanted them to be and I didn't really make them perfectly even because I wanted it to look really rustic but I just cut down the paint sticks as well to fit on the back to hold it together and you can use wood glue or even E6000 would probably work too 
but I have a staple gun so I'm just going to use that to put my sign together quickly. Um, these are not very expensive at all and they are literally amazing. I used to wait like all night for my signs to glue together with wood glue and now I can just, you know, be ready to, I can just make the other side in a few seconds after I put it together with my staple gun. So it's the best thing ever. And then I have a piece of paper from the inside of a frame from Dollar Tree that I saved from a previous DIY. And it just says fire up the grill and Zach loves to grill so I wanted to save that to make a sign for him and I thought it would be um, really cool because it already looks a, a little bit distressed so um, I just go ahead and cover the whole back with Mod Podge. I'm using a sponge brush because um, it will ruin your brush so make sure you use a disposable one that you can throw away. I am a stay-at-home mom, so you will see Brie in and out of the videos, um, and I don't usually get these all done at once, so that's why <laughs> sometimes she's in and sometimes she's out. So I would do a thicker layer of Mod Podge than you're seeing me do here. Um, I think it would just work out a little bit better because I did have some of the edges coming up a little bit um, once I did lay it flat onto the board. But just go ahead and lay it down and then I just centered it to where I wanted it to be. I didn't measure or anything. I just eyeball <laughs> pretty much everything. Which sometimes works out and sometimes it's not the best idea. But what can I say? <laughs> That's what I do. So I just um, smoothed it out as best I could with my hands. And then I'm taking an old card and using that to really get out any air bubbles and then I'm just covering the entire thing with Mod Podge. This wood was already kind of distressed looking or kind of um, had that dirty look to it that made it look old. Uh, probably because I left it outside one day, I don't know. Um, but if you wanna see how to get your wood to look old like that, I can do um, a video on that. Just let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see how to do that. Next, I'm just going in and sanding the edges of the of the paper. I wanted it to look really distressed, so I did go ahead and go over top of the whole thing. I was a little bit shy at first because I wasn't sure how it was going to look, but I am just thrilled with the outcome. So once I um, had it sanded down, I did go in and cover it one more time with some more Mod Podge just to really seal it in because when I um, sanded it, some of the Mod Podge did come up. But I did want the paper to be really distressed so I had to do that after I put the Mod Podge on but I think it turned out really really awesome. So I already did a video on this bunny centerpiece but I wanted to show you guys how I made this carrot to go with it. So I got some fabric from Walmart. I believe this was a, like $1.97 and it looks um, kind of you know kind of distressed not distressed I don't know what you call this stuff but I just like the look of it It looks kind of shabby chic and country to me so I just cut out a square and then I'm rolling it to how thick and how long I want my carrot to be and then I'm just hot gluing that um, I'm not gonna be washing this or anything so hot glue is just fine for me but if you want you could sew it or use um, some fabric tape or adhesive to glue that down but I was not too worried about it and then I just cut off the back edge if you wanted to you could make this a little more fancy but no one's gonna see the back for me so I just went ahead and cut it just like that next I just cut the top to make it even across the top and then I am taking an old pillow um, that we don't use anymore and I just cut the edge and I'm using the stuffing from inside there you can buy pillows at the store for just a few dollars and that's actually cheaper than buying the batting yourself. Um, so I would suggest doing that if you're just needing um, some stuffing to put in a pillow or anything like that. It's definitely cheaper to do a pillow from the store. Then I just decided to use my scissors to poke it down into the end because it wasn't really getting down there very well so I went ahead and stuffed it down with my scissors and then I just filled it up the rest of the way 
with that stuffing and this pillow is really old like I said so all the stuffing is kind of matted down so I'm just trying to fluff it up as I put it into the carrot. Now once I got to the top I realized I had a little more fabric than I wanted so I just cut off a little bit more of the top and then I am using some hot glue to glue the top all together. This was the hardest part. Um, it wasn't really as hard as it was time consuming. Um, I did really have to hold it down for a long time, like more than you see here. I just um, did cut out some of it, but I had to hold it for quite a while for before it was, you know, completely dry. So just take that into account. Don't let go because it will come undone. So after I just kind of fold it in the top, I'm taking some twine and wrapping that around my fingers. We're going to use this to make the carrot top. So I went ahead and just wrapped it around my fingers to make some loops and then I'm tying it in the middle just like you would do if you're making a twine bow. And then once I get that tied up, I'm going to go ahead and cut the ends like you would do with a tassel um, to get those carrot ends. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Now of course this carrot is not the actual color of a carrot and if you really wanted it to be orange you could wrap it with some orange twine. I know they have different colors at like craft stores or even um, some jute twine would be cute too. Um, just the regular color but you can really change it up and make it however you want to fit your decor. So I'm just cutting those ends and then I go ahead and kind of push this down into the top. I put some hot glue and then I push it down and then I'm adding glue all around the edges until I have it just scrunched in all the way until I like the look of it. Like I said, this part did take a while so just be patient with it but I really loved the outcome so I just kept adding glue all around the edges and scrunching it in. I did have to hold it for quite a long time for it to dry. Um, maybe it wouldn't be, maybe it would do better if you had a cool glue gun, but I have a hot one. So I just had to hold it for quite a while. Um, but I thought it turned out so, so cute. So definitely worth it. And then next I'm taking some Distress Ink. Um, this is from Hobby Lobby, I believe, and I am just rubbing that all over the carrot to make it look older and more um, just kind of dingy and shabby chic, just to match the decor that I'm wanting it to go with. I really focus on the end and then also on the top part where the wrinkles are, like the kind of gathers at the top just to add a little bit more dimension and um, just some darker color there would it, where it would more naturally be distressed and dirty. And I think it just turned out adorable and I think it goes perfect with this centerpiece. I absolutely love how all of these turned out. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite and let me know what you'd like to see me do next. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIYs like these. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family if you think they'd like it too. Thanks for watching. Bye.